Welcome back, everybody, to the 25 North Podcast. I am your GM, Jason. As always, I got the crew here. What is going on, everybody? Hello! Hello, hello. Hey. Ah. <laughs> I get that. This is, yep. the ener- this is the energy you're getting today. It's Lunar's got coffee and everyone should be threatened. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I will. Uh, yeah. It's awesome. okay. I take the blame for that Luckily, one. Luckily, Lunar's got coffee. Timothy's got booze. It's a match made in unholy heaven. Yeah, this will be this will be good. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> So, Corey, you said you had uh, a banter topic for us, so hit us. Yeah, yeah, I have a question for everybody. We're still kind of fresh to our new characters for the most part, with the exception of Syl. Is there a certain kind of genre or musical vibe that you find your character just kind of sits in? Uh, For myself, for some reason, upon creating Zaba, I have slipped into like a psychedelic stoner desert rock vibe. Uh, for him it's what i've been listening to in the background uh just that like wayward traveler in a distant land uh just kind of like going through kind of feels right to me for him but at the same time i also like the image of a a space cowboy riding a pink dinosaur through a desert with purple cactuses which you get very much at the same time so zob is no cow- cowboy but that's kind of where he sits so what have what have you been listening to? Like the doors? <laughs> so right now I am listening to Oh I clicked the wrong button. Uh right now I am listening to a band called Desert Mountain Tribe. But for bands that people may know, it's a lot of like King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Like nice. Gum. Uh that kind of vibe. Right on. Right on. So bands with like Albums that have 25 words in their title. Yeah, and even less words overall throughout the entire album for lyrics, quite yeah. often. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Who's next? Um, I can go with my usual non answer. <laughs> I pulled up all my playlists as you asked this question, and I have neglected to make a playlist for Syl. Really? All my other characters have a playlist. Syl doesn't get one, apparently. Syl so. just doesn't follow a rhythm, eh? I guess not. They march to their own rhythm. Uh, I've, got my own, I've, got a, I've got my own quest now to help, or in my heart, to help Syl find the music. <laughs> the music. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I have playlists for all my other characters. Even a character I played, like, twice has a playlist. Uh, but not Syl. So... Apparently, okay. I'm neglecting them. Uh, they need or a little so. more attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go next, Jackson, or should I? Uh, you go next. Okay. Yeah, you talked. I did. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Uh, so with Timothy, I actually, for all of my D&D characters, because I like trawling them, I like building a playlist just so I can get into like the character as I'm making my art. And so with Timothy, it's a lot of saucy music, but also kind of leans into like slight techno-esque vibes with like a haunting melody. Some of the songs are a lot more upbeat, while like other ones will be a lot more like mellow and honestly depressive. (laughs) Some of the songs on Timothy's playlist, I have Began from Manskin on there, uh, or Mainskin. Amazing, amazing band. Super good. I also have Call Me By Your Name from Little Nas X on there, too. And the songs from like One Republic are even on Timothy's playlist. He's an all over the place kind of guy with music. So. I, whatever vibe is so long as it's a little down bad. <laughs> Sounds like it's just a little manic. It's a little manic. It is definitely a lot of like manic and the vibe of the songs will be very like, while they sound upbeat lyrics are not at all. Gotcha. Yeah. I'd say, uh, Vesuviac 
fits the uh, symphonic metal vibe the best. Dipping into like as heavy as like Amon Amarth with a Norwegian Viking metal, as well as like Miracle of Worlds with Sabaton. Uh, just anything with a very, very strong, powerful presence behind it. If there are other like instruments like a symphony behind the metal band as well that's even better he's all he's a he's a dragon he's all about that power all about that presence and so that grandiose uh, that yeah. you get with it yeah based on your response i feel like we're gonna have to talk music just you and me at one point here because oh, hell yeah. listed bands that not everybody's gonna know so that's a good sign and i'm about it no i i get the i get the idea and would it be safe to say the vibe right now is we're about to be set up for the murder of somebody in this this building? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty nasty vibes. Well, and that's that's before, my crack at trying to do the the flip over. No, yeah. but and that was a great one, and I appreciate it. But I'm super interested in in our listeners too. So oh, uh, for, for our sure. listeners, I I if you have a Spotify playlist for your characters, which I know at least four people listening for sure do minimum four, but I guarantee you there's good. There's a lot more. I want you to share those playlists because I please not only me, I'm sure every single one of us on this, in this here recording Mm -hmm. are super interested in hearing. I will check out every single one of these playlists myself. That's, that's my guarantee. The teacher always checks the homework, you know, you gotta, you gotta check the homework for the, the player playlists no personally i love listening to character playlists because that's how i find new songs and i'm like oh i like this a lot time to squirrel this away into another character's playlist (laughs) but yeah last time we left off y'all went into the library archives to go ahead and try to find some maps but you found a ghost (laughs) damn (laughs) you found a ghost and, well, you took care of the ghost. And we found out a little bit more about Timothy. Mm. And you did, you ended up, you did end up finding the maps. Yes. And the maps did take you, looks like that the there might be a cave. If you looked at the map and you looked at Poppy's really 200 year old vague drawing and you kind of did the math and it looks like there might be a cave on this island which isn't on the map but is on poppies so that's where you're kind of headed towards but not before uh, Zaba overheard some gossip coming from the floor above and some students who were in between classes talking about some some bullshit about the Dean of Cuisine. Dean de Cuisine being murdered yeah. in his private kitchen, killed by his own filleting knife. And a senior student was the last person that the Dean de Cuisine was seen with, and she was seen fleeing from the kitchen, a bloody filleting knife in hand. And yet the Sioux scholar insisted that classes proceed as usual, which is very strange. So that's where we left off. And y'all are still in the library archives and we'll pick it up from there. Hey, just so you guys know, some students above were talking about some, uh, some of this suspicious business with the Dean cuisine and, uh, you know, we should probably speed this up. I feel exposed. Yeah, we well, got what we need, right? Yeah, I mean, we'll leave. Think... Yeah, I that think that's a good yeah, idea. Unless you want to go look at the body. You seem so reluctant before, so maybe your uh, mindset has changed, but... Not our concern, right? Hey, you got it, Capitan. I mean... All right, we can we can just go. Though, I mean, don't we have to let them know about their ghostwriting or the ghostwriter situation with the book? That's true. I did want to. We shouldn't get distracted, you, though. Uh, yeah, that's fair. 
but if we happen to run into <laughs> that other guy, he probably had a name. The Sioux Scholar. The it Sioux was, Scholar. Uh, then Sioux Scholar. we can yell at him a little. Lemon Gun- Gundamar, I think is his name. <laughs> <laughs> Gundam Arms. <laughs> <laughs> Live of Gundams for arms. <laughs> no, yeah, that, that that Gundam was named Heavy Arms. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Limbin was his first name, L I M B I N. And the last name was Gum Nammer. Uh, so G U M N A M M. A R. Got it. Gundam heavy arms. <laughs> Gundam heavy arms. Yeah, Timothy still has the ghostwriting book. He's got the scrolls. He's just trying to look. It's like, hey, it's up to you. Whatever we do, we're getting out of here. We might want to get out of here, Nelvin, just because you know. Uh, I don't want to be in the same room as they probably will be. Like, hey, you're new people. We'll accuse you. You know, I don't see good. why that would be the case. We haven't really gone away from this room. Uh, I don't know. People are stupid. <laughs> they like to do actions first and then think later. All right, uh, just gonna we go. Though. All right, let's fucking leave. Uh, <laughs> Timothy picks up the book. He's just gonna fucking go. <laughs> We are attempting to go back out yeah. the same, the front door of the academy. Eh. Alright, as soon as you head out the door, you see or Paul's right there. You see uh, Sue Scholar Limbin and a pair of campus security guards. And Limbin immediately is like, guards! Those are the ones! Yes, them. They are the ones. They are the ones who have murdered the Dean to Cuisine. And if you remember correctly, Zaba and Vesuviak, you two realize that he, that something is different about Limbin this time. He is not nearly as twitchy and like afraid almost as he was the last time you saw him like not at all like there is a very stark difference about Limbin this time oh this guy is a good actor Timothy leans over to Vesuviak's like see Vesuviak <laughs> is just going to ignore Limbin and or ignore Timothy is going to look at Limbin and go I believe you are mistaken you passed us on the way to try and report things that were going on when we asked to view the archives by the way you that ghost problem has been temporarily solved for you so yeah you're gonna want to release this ghost uh, novel so you don't have to deal with it permanently I can see through your lies Guards! Arrest these people! Zaba looks to Sill. Yeah, hey, Timothy do we, looks uh, to Sill. You want, can we fight back? I don't want to go to jail. We can resist them diplomatically. We just want to pull back, diplomat. lock the doors? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we are not... I decided to mute myself halfway through talking. <laughs> <laughs> Super effective. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are not letting ourselves get arrested. That's yeah. And so if you, if you want to know that dealing non-lethal damage, you will be taking a penalty unless oh. you have the non-lethal trait on your weapon. Oh. Now that, okay. that penalty will be a minus two to attack. Okay. Now, some weapons will have the non-lethal trait, mm -hmm. in which which point they then that means they can deal non-lethal damage without taking that penalty. Okay. But um, I have put you all in initiative order. 
Oh boy. So you can go ahead and roll that. Okay. Uh, and I am going to roll for the NPCs. Nine on the die. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Let's begin the encounter, shall we? Oh boy. Ooh, and we get to see the new turn to the turn marker Ooh. that Sean Eldritch Dream made for us. Thank you very much, Sean. And if you ever need some graphic design work, you can always reach out to Sean Eldritch Dream. He has a Ko-Fi. So, yeah, and if anybody isn't familiar with Eldritch Dream, they've been producing third-party content for five or six years and been pretty pretty astute fault or supporters of small creators that whole time. So, yeah, if you're looking for things, definitely check them out. They do a lot of, like, really interesting uh, races and that kind of thing, too, for your home games. So... I can't shout him out more. So the Sorry, suits. Jason. No, God, that's cool. I told Sean we'd shout him out for helping us out on, on the show. Yeah. So um, uh, I just like Sean. He's just Sean's deserves a great the shout out. Yeah. So the Sioux Scholar, for their first action, they will pull out a runcible spoon. And if you're not familiar with what a runcible spoon is, a runcible spoon is basically a spork that has a very sharp edge on one side that's sharp as a knife and a really long handle. So think of like a ladle with a spork on the end and a really sharp knife-like edge on the edge of that spork side. They're real things too. So pulls out a runcible spoon for their first action. Okay. For their second action they will stride forward and they have a speed of 25 feet for their third action they will stride forward once more and they are quickened so they get a fourth action oh shit and for that fourth action they are going to strike at Vesuviac with that runcible spoon and they're going to hit for mm-hmm. Well, oh, I suppose I should probably reveal that, shouldn't I? Here. <laughs> mm. There we go. Whoa. So it's actually going to be five plus seven is... Twelve. Let me do it. Twelve damage plus an extra D6. Jeez. Twelve oh, plus five. Damage. Seven, Seventeen damage. <laughs> go nice. ahead. Minus 17. I can take care of that for you. All right, thank you. There you you go. And that is their turn. Well, then. Yikes. And, Timothy, you are up. Yeah, I sure as heck am. Okay. Okay. Minus one. I will say, at Vesuviac getting hurt with this random knife after suddenly being accused of murder... Uh, there is fire in his eyes. He is pissed off. Real quick. Hold on one <laughs> second. Uh, real quick. Mm. Timothy? Yeah. So. Let's see here. Creature that begins its turn. So I'm going to need you to go ahead and make this will save for me super quick. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're doing great today. That was a uh, three plus eight for a total of 11. Jesus. Okay, do you want to spend your hero point on that or you want to keep that 11? Oh. What? Okay, so what happens when I spend the hero point exactly? Because I want to make sure I understand that correctly. I'm so, so here, sorry. So real quick, hero points can be spent for on a number of different ways. Basically, you could spend a hero point to re-roll any d20 roll. You can also spend a hero point to petition me, the GM, for something. You know, whether you're, like, petitioning a god for something or, you know, you could just spend it for, like, you want to petition the GM for something, you could spend a hero yeah. point. Or, if you ever get into a situation where your character is dying, you can spend all of your hero points that you ha- that you currently have. Whether it's one or three, and you just spend your entire allotment of hero points that you currently have to automatically stabilize. 
And that's what you can spend hero points on. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm gonna hold on to the hero dice just because I might I might need that later, and I haven't really taken any damage yet okay. or anything like that. So I'm fine with taking whatever this is about to be. Okay. In that case, okay, that will make you. That was a normal failure, so you are frightened one currently. Frightened. All right. Because with fear and struggle to control your nerves, frightened condition always includes a value. Mm, yucky. Okay. Cool. I think. I, I will find out. I am scared. I am a little scared. All right. So is it my turn now? Yes, it is. Perfect. Well, so I, I, I'm trying to think of what the best way to go about this is right now. I think first and foremost, Timothy takes out his implement. Mm -hmm. He's taking out his wand. Uh, so that's one action that he does. Yep. Then the next thing he's going to do is he's going to exploit vulnerability. He's gonna do that move. Give me a second here, I'm trying to actually click it so it can pull it up. I am trying to remember how to do things on here. I am so sorry. No, you're good. There it is, ha ha, I figured it out. Ooh. All right. So yeah. So, uh, you, so you wanna have your token clicked. Yes. Then you wanna target your target with a uh, click on the, Click on the other target and hit T. Yes, that's how it works. Thank you. And then you want it. Then you use that exploit vulnerability button in the chat. Okay. I've done it, and now I'm going to press it. Oh, uh, no, it's not another three. God dang it. Three on the die plus 11 is a 14. <sighs> and that will be a failure. Yeah. And a failure on exploit vulnerability. You fail to recall salient weakness about the creature. To exploit, oh, a, but but you instead exploit your more personal a more personal vulnerability. You can exploit only using your personal antithesis. So you have personal antithesis on this creature. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. So, all right. Well, he's figured out like something about him where he's like, okay, I'm gonna. Uh, Timothy's still staying where he's at, by the way, since you know he's like, I'm not necessarily gonna move. I think then. Honestly, I think Timothy's gonna shake, like, not shake off the fear or try his best to steal his nerves as he points his implement to the sous, the sous chef. And he just says to him, very brave words for a short man. Fucking <laughs> back off, idiot. And he's gonna demoralize. <laughs> Ooh. Nice. I really like the animation for Demoralize as well. Yeah. So you need it's... to make an intimidation check, so roll intimidation. Okay. Oh, please, Timothy. Please, Timothy. Stop rolling threes. Take what? Lame. Lame. So that was a 10 on the die the, for yeah. 21, which is a failure. But that does that, that just doesn't mean it doesn't do anything. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. At least it's not a critical failure or anything like that. Yeah. So if anything, now I've just openly taunt the pig man and he's probably like, ah! Yeah. Well, it's All right. but the regardless whether you succeed or fail, the target is immune to your demoralize for the next ten minutes. Dang, that's what I thought. So I mean I mean, other people can attempt to demoralize him, but you yeah. can't anymore. All right. Well, that's your turn. Yeah, that's Timothy's turn. Timothy nice. pointed at a man, and he's, and he's a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but your frightened condition does go down at the end of your turn, so you're no longer scared. Nice. All right, Sil, you are up. Yeah, so I, I... need you. I need you now to go ahead and make that aura save. So that oh. was a six on the die for a 14. That is also a failure. Cool. Super scary. You scary. are also going to be frightened one. 
Yep. Okay. I will. Okay. So I assume the advantage of having a weapon like cards is that I'm mostly just holding it in my hands as we're walking around. Makes sense. Is that fair? Okay. So I will drop into stance that lets me use them as a weapon, move forward around Vesuviac to get... I think I can get all the way around. Right? Do you, do you... No, I can't get quite all the way around. So I will move up beside Vesuviac out on the stairs and slice at this guy. And despite Syl's words of, you know, we should do this diplomatically, they're doing lethal damage, or attempting to do lethal damage. Woo! So 15 for 25 to hit this guy. All right, that is a hit. And the damage is a total of eight. And eight is... It's a hit. Cool. That's my turn. So you, d- you moved... Oh, you stanced. Okay. Stanced, yep. Gotcha. All right. Well, with the uh, campus security guards, like, oh, well, okay, <laughs> we're coming. So, two actions to come on up and get right next to Cell. Oh, you, don't, you can take your frightened condition down by one Cell. So. All right, I okay. took care of that. Thanks. And the campus security guard's gonna come up next to next to Cell and gonna try to smack you with a sap. Because it's uh, non-lethal. And uh, for the listeners out there, I'm just going to throw it out there. All of the combatants involved in this current melee rolled a 20 or above on initiative. Unfortunately, not all of us rolled as 20. A 20 quite as good as others. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Whoa. that's a hit on Sill with a sap for non-lethal damage. For a total of seven. Seven bludgeoning damage, so. Yep. Got it. And the other cop's like, Paul, I'm coming, don't you worry. (laughs) Damn. And get right next to Timothy. Hey, what's up? You don't have to hit me, you know. All right, come on there. You're coming with me. I have done nothing, but yeah. Oh, <laughs> and he critically hits Timothy with the sass. For all of 14 non-lethal damage. Yippee! Well, hey. <laughs> Yikes. Yep. Could be right. worse. Probably all right, be Zava, a lot better. You get to go ahead and make this aura save. Let me throw it in chat for you. Whoa! All right, Zaba. I am, I am Zaba Utrov. I am not failing <laughs> against fear. So that was a thirteen for a twenty-two on that will save. That's a success. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. All right. Well, unfortunately, due to action economy and Zaba being kind of lazy and probably not having a weapon out, we'll move up with take a stride oh. action to the south, joining the rest of the, the party in the doorway. Uh, use another action to draw their just vicious looking uh, kind of gnarled bastard sword and is going to just immediately strike out at the chef de cuisine because they drew first blood. Oh, the suit, the suit, Sioux scholar? Yes. yes All right. Oh, you killed oh. that. Without okay. a, if I, do I have to use a second action to go two-handed upon drawing it, or can I draw? It no, I would say you hands? could draw. You could draw it two-handed. Yeah, but yeah, if you if you ever dropped one hand, that's an action it to, to one put hand. A hand back onto it for yes. sure. But I would I'll allow you to draw it two-handed automatically. Yeah. Perfect, and thanks to Zaba being large. Uh, I do have reach, so I am striking over top of Vesuviac down at the Sioux Scholar. Oof. So that is a 13 on the die for a 24 to hit. 
So if he actually going to move his neck over even, so that yeah, way it's a even, clear strike. <laughs> even with cover, that you hit him. And he's going to take 19 points of slashing damage. All right. And that... He takes it. Okay. And now Vesuviak, bottom of the round. Okay. Oh, you I need to make, make that. that Hold on, let me make that. That's. The will save. Let's have you make that will save real quick. All right. There you go. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> that. All right. Click at the brain. Let's see it. Oh, five on the die for a seventeen. I I still succeeded. That's a success. <laughs> Lucky. Oh, clerics have good will saves. Let's go. Okay. Syl is the leader of the party, so the Suviak feels kind of obligated to uh, focus Syl first. Uh, so they are going to go ahead and use their cantrip forbidding ward on Syl. So I just realized I forgot to target. That's fine. Syl can drag that onto her token. Okay. And then for... That took two actions. So for my final action, I want to go ahead and do a battle medicine uh, so I can treat wounds on Timothy. So let me grab Timothy hit. Okay, actions. When you said grab Timothy, I just imagine Vesuviac just grabbing a hold of Timothy and shaking him. I was like, stop dying, idiot! <laughs> oh, that almost was a nat 20. So that's going to be an 8 on the die plus 12 for 20, and so you get healed for, uh, wow, max 16. <laughs> 2d8. So, yeah, there Six. you go. 16 health back for you. <laughs> Sweet, I'm back to full. Let's go. All right. And that is all Vesuviak can do on his turn. So uh, that's where that'll end. Perfect. All right. The Sioux Scholar. Hmm. Okay. So the Sioux Scholar didn't. Okay. So this is what they're going to do. Okay. They are going to move on over right there. <laughs> Next to Timothy. Hey, what's up? And Timothy, and for a free action, they have an ability called Nauseating Presence. Ew. <laughs> so for free, focus its intent, or focus its pressure on a creature. The creature must roll a fortitude save. God, dang it. All right. I pressed it, hopefully it loads. I think it did. Press it again, I guess. There it is. There, okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. So I rolled a two, plus my nine. So that's an 11, gang. Hi, Timothy Bono is not doing too hot here, kings and queens and rulers in between. Shout out to the two crew. That, well, there, uh, there's no, there's no critical effect on this, on this bang. pressure, this nauseating pressure. Whew. You're just sickened one. Great. <laughs> oh, well, uh, you knew what sickened one does. Yeah, from, that's true. From last time. <laughs> All right. Timothy in the back of his head's like, God, damn it, not again. <laughs> so that's their fur. That's their free movement for being oh. quickened. Now, for their first action, they're just going to go ahead and target Timothy. Yeah, I figured. With What's that, up? With that spoon. <laughs> now that you're sickened and you, um, your AC's lower, so. Man. Ooh, 12 on the die. Oh. That's a hit. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. A oh. 1 and a 2 on 2d6. For 10 plus an extra D6, 10 oh. plus 6, so 16 total. So yeah. that's what you got healed for. 
Yeah. It just healed you for that. Come on. <laughs> Timothy, Timothy looks not my fault, man. They keep kind of doing shit to me. All right. Well, that's Whoa. never mind. Ignore that. <laughs> All right. So let's go again. Another strike. Oh, 16 on the die. For for 25, that's another hit on that second uh, strike. So we're going to roll that. Yeah, roll it. A one and a three this time for seven plus four is 11 plus an extra D6 for a one. Oh, oh. So 12. Uh. And for their third and final action, they Didn't are going Didn't they to, move? They get a free one. Oh, okay. Because they're quickened. So with them being quickened, they also get to do the other uh, thing that made Timothy sick as well, too. I'm just so trying to figure a, this out. So quickened allows them to either make a free stride or a free strike. Okay, cool. So. Good to know. I, I want to learn that because I, yep. I was curious. And you can get quickened through the haste spell. Got it. Oh, there's other okay. ways to get it, too. But haste is probably going to be the most common for players Got it. to get it. Okay. And they move away for their third and final action, and we go to Timothy, and the sickened Timothy now needs to go ahead and yeah. they're still in the aura, so go ahead and make that will. <sighs> Sorry to interject here. Oh! Uh, did you say that the Sioux Scholar moved away? I didn't see it happen on my foundry. That's the only reason I'm yes, terrified. Yes, they did. Yeah, I did. Oh, do you want to do the no escape? I do want to do no escape, yes. But okay, I can't yeah. see where they moved, so if you just want to move me to them... Oh, I can't use no escape. Oh. He walks away from me at this time. It has a trait that I have yet to trigger. Oh, that's right. That's right. You can't use it yet. Well, Timothy, here's, here's I, some great news. Yeah. So that was a natural 20 on the die. Yes, it was. Uh, so that is a uh, plus 10. That's a critical success. That means you are immune to the frightening aura for the next 10 minutes. Fuck yes. So you don't have to, for the remainder of this combat, unless the combat goes longer than 10 minutes, which I highly doubt because I'd be 100 rounds. <laughs> you are you don't have to make those aura saves anymore. Let's go, Timothy's. Timothy's. It's coming up Timothy over here. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. So with the sick, and I'm trying to remember, I only get two actions, correct? No, no. The okay. sickened just means the, the the last time. That's right, because it was the other thing. I'm trying. I was slowed. trying to remember. Yes. Last time was slowed. Yes. The sickened just kind of brings every every one of your stats down by one. Yeah, which kind of blows. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it sucks, but uh, well, Timothy's mad. He's gonna point his implement to Vesuviac, or not Vesuviac, not Vesuviac, oh my god, uh, the Sioux Scholar. Sorry, my brain's <laughs> fried. He points his... <laughs> betrayal it, so soon. The betrayal, no. <laughs> Saboteur. No, <Why>? he points... <laughs> he points his wand towards the Sioux Scholar, mm -hmm. and he is going to fling some fucking magic at this nerd. Oh, okay. So... You so, fling, it, fling at magical energies at the target within 60 feet, dealing damage equal to 1d4 plus your charisma mod uh, with a basic reflex save against... Okay, so I get to make that reflex save. Yeah, dog. Oh, nat 20. He wants <laughs> to die. <laughs> nat 20 on the die. The damage is the type you... All right. Well, he he critically succeeded that reflex save. And so... as you did, as that happened... Telepath telepathically in your head, you hear this. <laughs> uh, 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 Don't laugh! <laughs> Alright, that was two actions. my fucking best here! That was two actions. Alright. <laughs> Timothy looks then to the security guard that's right next to him, and he's like. Oh, one second, I'm just gonna make sure I actually do the T for target here. He looks to him now and he just like points his implement at him and be like, I swear to every 
goddamn god that exists. If you do not get out of my face in the next five seconds, I am going to make you wish you were dead. <laughs> and he's going to demoralize him. Ooh. Ooh, okay. So, intimidation check, please. Please, any god. Please, any god. <laughs> okay, that is a success. Huh. He's scared. Good. He should be. <laughs> Alright, so. Yeah, it's great news that someone's scared. Yeah. Okay. Listen, I'm trying my best. <laughs> hold on, so. No, hold really on. Great yeah. news. Hold on, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You need to you need to see if you're scared. <laughs> Re scared. Okay. <laughs> A little piss goblin. A little scared. Oops. So I rolled a 15 for a total of 23. That's a success. So you're not scared, but you're n- you're not immune. Yeah. So seeing that this guard over here is scared, so we'll move over. Uh, so they're on the steps next to the guard that's next to Timothy. And they do kind of look a little surprised to see blood on their cards. And so they will strike non-lethally at this scared guard. And since they now have Dread Striker, the scared guard is flat-footed. Ooh, hold well, on, let me turn Whoa. that on for you. Sorry, I rolled too Well, fast. regardless, that's a hit. Yeah, so 14 for 25, so that's a hit, and then the damage will include Ooh. sneak damage. So 16 damage, non-lethal damage. Can you deal precision non-lethally? <laughs> I don't know. You can you can precision yeah, precision strike a non-artery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's true. There are ways to make someone go unconscious using knowledge of anatomy. Yeah, that's with playing cards. I feel like that's a separate, f- separate that's feed altogether. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Maybe. let's well, I don't points. see anything in sneak damage that says it has to be lethal. And okay. Dread Striker just says okay. when they're frightened. Yeah, I mean, I trust you. If, if you. if you looked up the rules, I trust you. But we'll go with it for now mm-hmm. until we learn otherwise. So Yes, we yeah. find the rules that aren't Get at us. for me. You know better <laughs> than us sometimes. <laughs> All right. So that's the first strike. I moved. I struck. Stru- struck? <laughs> struck. You Words moved, you struck. Yeah. You did and a I'll, hit. Uh, slash non lethally again at this same guy. Um that's a sixteen. 16 for twenty three again? That's a hit. Right. Don't. More non lethal damage of ten. Ooh, that was snake eyes on your on your Was it? D fours, yeah. Yeah. It's really hard to do non-lethal precision damage. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, because this, this guard is almost unconscious. <laughs> oh my god. And I suppose reaction to shout to the rest of the group, remember not to kill the guards at least, please. Why do you think I made them scared of me? <laughs> or at least one of them. Because you are afraid. No, actually, I'm pretty good, actually. Uh-huh. All right, so the the one campus guard will be, hmm, he'll be like, so this guy, the one campus guard that's about to go, his name's Paul, and the one that's almost unconscious is named Blart. So, <laughs> so Paul's is going to be like, Blart, are you are you okay, bud? And he's going to ch- attempt to. Knock Vesuviac unconscious with that sap. So here we go. Sap. 17 on the die. Yikes. Not a, not a crit with the 17. Still not a crit. These guys are just mooks. Two on the die for six. Not lethal right. damage. Can I click the damage button? I got you, bud. All, All right. right. All right. Strike number two. 16 on the die. Still a hit. Four. Ooh, Ooh max Yikes. damage. 10. 
10 non-lethal to Vesuviac. Vesuviac's hey, seen some better days. And final strike. Here we go. That's a critical miss. Yo. Let's go. All right. Here, Here's Blarty. Blarty's just like, oh, I'm too old for this shit, and he's going to try to get out. He's 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 bailing. It's a good choice. Honestly, smart choice. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, we're not the ones that did it though. See ya. All right. He's gone. Oh god, he left a pile of blood. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone. Non-lethal blood. Non <laughs> it's fine. Non-lethally it, it, bleeding. It, it's a it's a It's not a It's just a flesh wound. It's yeah. not a flesh not. wound. He got yeah. a really bad for. nosebleed. That's all it was. That's what I was looking for. It's not a flesh wound. It's just a flesh wound. It's not lethal. He's but the flesh wound. I'm going to remove him from the combat. All right, <laughs> Zaba. Zaba, you're up. And you get to go ahead and make that fear aura save. There we Even go. Even here. Let's see if you can make a crit. I'm still under the effect even from here. Oh, yeah. 10 on the a, die for a 19. That's a success. Dang. That was a tease. It was on the 17 for a second. <laughs> so, Zaba. Zaba. Move forward. Go Zaba. 20 feet. Move forward. Out of the doorway, fully into the courtyard, able to extend himself to his full 11 foot 6. And I'm going to make two strikes on the Sioux Scholar. Whoa. That's a 22 on the first one. Yeah, that was an 11 rolled for a 22. That's a hit. All right, so that is going to be 14 points of slashing damage. All right. Nice. And then I will strike him again immediately. Again. Oh, Ooh. my gosh. So God. that's a natural Damn. 20. Um, natural so that's a 20, 20 on the die. Hot dice. Let's see what that damage looks like. Oh my oh, god. Oh, oh, like oh no. <laughs> so I, 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 oh, I rolled max damage. So on the 2d12, I rolled 12s for a total of 56 points of slashing damage to the sous chef or sous scholar, former sous scholar. Sous scholar. All right. It's <laughs> awesome. Hachima. Was... Okay, so you can one shot me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was that was max damage, but yeah. we're not, the the fight's not over. Yeah, there is a guy still here. Be gone, liar! No. Be gone, thought. Because as soon oh. as the Sioux Scholar is reduced to death, from out of its body lunges a spirit, <gasps> and this spirit is. Yeah, you can you can see it right right there. You can look at its token. <laughs> and this thing was like, oh, this was the one. This was the thing, clearly that was laughing inside your head, Timothy. He points at it and he's like, "That's the thing that laughed in my head." All right, and I suppose I need to add this thing to the initiative tracker. <laughs> Nerd. Hell All right. Yeah. Hey, Capitano, are these the quality of foes you've been fighting this whole time? Maybe. <laughs> I, I will, what do you I will mean, keep you maybe? safe. Wait, what do you mean, maybe? Like oh, no more like... recruitment drives, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's Timothy just good. looks just so like, what do you mean, maybe? <laughs> All right, Vesuviak, you are up. Okay. Vesuviak, seeing a spirit, has now entered the battlefield after looking, I guess, underneath <laughs> Zaba's arm because he's right in front of him. <laughs> if I say something to the guard, is that an action or is that a free action? Well, it depends on what you want to say to him. Like, if you want to say just something like real quick, like run, you can, I will get, let you say it's free. If it's something you would just say and you're not you're just leaving it up to them to decide free but if it's you trying to convince them to do anything or yada yada then there's probably a role and then it's going to be an action 
I think Vesuviac is going to... Uh, I'm not going to continue to use an action to keep the concentration up on uh, Sill. So I have all three of my actions here. Um, I'm going to look to the guard and say, You've been deceived. Fight that thing. And he's going to point at the spirit. I don't know what, how we want to call that one. <laughs> that's, no, that's fine. You could just, that you can leave it. Okay. Unless you I, unless you actually want to try to convince them, then that that'll be a diplomacy. No, I'm I'm just gonna basically oh. point at the thing. Just so it's like you see that there's clearly something else going on. Like think for yourself. <laughs> and uh, he's going to stride five feet just to get in the pocket with everybody. So he's. It within five feet. Oh, of... hold on. You need to make your fear check. You right, you right. Let so me handle that. I did find it strange that this Orpok chef had a had a fear aura of some yeah. variety. And yeah, that was weird. A little, a little devil or demon, whichever it is. Probably a... I, try, I tried to hint at it by having them act completely different than what you... Oh, no, I figured something's up right, with this so dude. so that was a 10 on the die plus 12 for a 22. That's a su- success. All right, so first action was to stride just to get within five feet of Timothy, Sill, and Zaba. Hey, what's up? Second action, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my heal spells on Timothy. Just to do the one action one. So this button here. All right, clicked it. What is? What do I do next? <laughs> Hit the healing button. Aha. <laughs> All right, so that is going to be for a 13 on the die. So, yeah, 13 health back. Thank you. And then I'm going to use my battle medicine action on myself to... Yeah, uh, heal yourself, only. To heal myself up a bit, because uh, I am a little bit hurt. <laughs> okay, treat wounds. That is going to be a 14 on the die, plus 12 for 26. It's a critical success, uh, healing me for 18 points. So I can heal. The super act. Nice. Okay, and that should be all three of my actions. There you go. Beautiful turn. Wow. Beautiful turn. And the spirits. They get their turn. What's up? (laughs) All right, so their first turn will If I be... say no, will he say it? <laughs> will he not do it? <laughs> their first turn will be to... Let's see here. Cast a spell at Zaba. Whoa! Really? <laughs> Make that will save there, Zaba. You got it. Oh. That is a failure. I don't think it is. Oh? Are you re-rolling? I'm gonna re-roll it. Okay. Zaba's so feeling strong right now. <laughs> Zaba feels too high and mighty. Oh, it didn't go any better. <laughs> no. So my nope. first roll was seven, the second one was an eight. So I went from a 16 to an 18. I'm still a failure. All right. So that's a failure. So you'll take. Yikes! Eight total mental damage. So that was a <laughs> shitty roll on 44. Eight total mental damage. But since you also failed, you. Oh, wait, you also take persistent damage. That's where it comes in. You also take 2d4 persistent damage. And on a failure, you are also sickened one. Oh, cool! Yeah, this if the target is, this is recovers really great. from if the target recovers from being sickened, the persistent damage ends and the spell ends. Okay. All right. Okay. So yeah, he he cast the spell. I'm not going to tell you what it was unless somebody wants to spend the reaction to identify it. So oh. I'm, I'm curious. I'll do it. I'll well, spend my do, reaction. Do you have the reaction to, to identify spell? You might not. No, it's I a, don't. My only reaction is shield block, so never mind. <laughs> yeah. No, less. No reactions for Timothy. All right. No for the so bomb. that was two actions, and then for its third action, it's gonna going to reach out and spirit fist. 
Ew. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zaba. <laughs> Gross, oh, don't Zaba's do that. Zaba's here for it. 16 on the die. That's a hit. That Yikes. it is. <sighs> for 12 force damage. How you doing, Zaba? You got her. And I... I laugh at you. <laughs> I don't have the action to actually use the push. So, can't do it now. All right, that's its turn. As And as this thing... As this thing um, did all that damage to Zaba, you hear inside your head saying, Oh, this body's going to do nicely. <laughs> And it's Timothy's turn. Hey, what's up, baby? Okay. Yeah, I don't like this nerd. So I have a question for you. Because this is technically not the same person, could I do my demoralize on this thing? Or uh, exploit vulnerability, rather? Because it's a different yeah. uh, creature? I know I, I saw that it's gone. Yeah, like I have to. Okay. And so you demoralize because actually... it's also a different, a completely yes. different target. Yeah. All right. So Timothy's gonna move because I, I mean I can I can see them. I would think from where Timothy. Oh yeah, you don't at. even need to move. That's true. All right. So cool. Timothy points his uh wand at uh the spirit, and he is going to ex. Exploit vulnerability first. Let's do that. All right. So remember, huh. target it when you, you yes. click, before you click the button. Oh, well, let's see really quick. Target and use. Please. 11 on the die. Is a success? <gasps> oh, Beautiful. my God. So it says choose the vulnerability to exploit. So, so you success. You recall an yeah. important fact about the creature learning its highest weakness or one of its highest weaknesses, if it has multiple, but not the other weaknesses, resistances, or immunities. Okay. You can exploit either the creature's mortal weakness or personal antithesis. You get to choose. Your unarmed or weapon strikes against the creature also become magical if they weren't already. When you succeed at your exploit vulnerability, compare the result of your esoteric lore to the DC to the DC to recall knowledge for that creature. If the number would be a success or a critical success, you gain information as if you had succeeded at the recall knowledge. So okay. also make an esoteric lore check. So just go ahead and just make that one for free. Okay, esoteric lore. Give me a second. I'm trying to find it. Esoteric. Got it. Give me a second. Roll. All right, so no, that's so no. it's not a success or a critical. Never mind. So it's going to be personal antithesis because this has no weakness. Yeah, I was about to say, I saw that it has no weakness, so personal antithesis. Yeah, Timothy just looks to you guys, says, hey, this thing's got no weakness. Which, that's the case. Then Timothy, seeing this, or at least getting this, Oh my god, that four is gonna be nice. So he, hmm, I'm taking for a second. So just okay. He is then going to, you know what? I'm gonna fling magic at this fool. Okay. Fling magic at this cat, cause that's two actions. All right, so this cat's gonna first make a basic reflex save. Oh, three on the die for a failure. It's going to take full damage. So. so it would be the leveled damage button I click. Hey, baby. All ten. Yes, Takes ten. It all. And then I think Timothy has this, like, look upon his face as he strikes this thing as one of just fucking cockiness. And he looks to it. It's like, this is the part where you run. <laughs> And this thing just turns right to Timothy and hisses. He hisses back. What a meaningful conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and I would hiss into the microphone, but that would probably be cut right out. Oh, yeah. No. Normalization. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we turn to Cell. And Cell, you did not succeed yet, or critically succeed in that aura. So you still have to make a save. No save. Yeah. Whoa! Did it roll? That is a critical success. Yay! Beautiful. So, Cell, that's a critical success. That was a 19 on the die for a total of 27. All right, so awesome. you're good. No more scared. So I will take the time to actually use an action to turn to the guard and tell him to either help us or get out of the way. You don't need to get mixed up in this, which I would assume, or I'm going for a diplomatic thing here, not an intimidation thing. There it is. Oh. <laughs> oh, good. I'm sure he believes us. I rolled a one for a 12. Okay. So, I'm gonna have to kill a guard now, thanks. I don't wanna have to kill a guard! No worries. You guys like killing stuff, it's fine. <laughs> Timothy doesn't! Uh, <laughs> I will move up to the flank with Zaba, so diagonally surrounding this thing, and slice at it for the last action. Uh, 19 for uh, 30. 19 on the die. Oh, That's a critical hit. Yeah. <laughs> it's not gonna look impressive after Zaba's critical hit. No, it's not gonna look 20, especially twenty-two damage. Especially because you know this thing is ethereal and incorporeal. You can clearly see it. <laughs> and so this thing was not described as such. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I yeah, mean, you, so you still haven't work. you still haven't done recall knowledge on it, so. No, and I never will, so that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, yeah, this How thing is not gonna... You? It's not gonna take any of your... I don't know if it's gonna take any of this damage. We'll see. Oh, shit. I don't, no, cool. it takes zero of that damage. That critical damage. Absolutely zero. Oh, that yes. Hurts. You just swing right through. Nothing's connecting as you swing your card. Uh, you guys use your magic. If this was anything else, that you this would be a very impressive hit. Yeah, that's fine. Hopefully this guard leaves. Yep, and the guard walks in for one action, slams the door shut for another, and just bolts away. Timothy, as like he's <laughs> as he's moving past, is like, "Hey, Paul, can you like go?" tell people that we're not the ones that did things. Just like, just making sure. Okay, nope, you're gone. Alright, cool, see you later. <laughs> Alright, Zaba, you're... Oh, wait, hold, sorry. Nope, nope, don't don't worry about that, Zaba. You're up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Zaba, you're good. Zaba, good out here. Alright, well... Presuming that Syl is just incapable of striking her foes. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I'm just gonna <laughs> unleash on this spirit. Get their ass! We do not like to learn our lessons. Learning lessons in this economy? <laughs> uh, that's a 26. I'm that... sure this will hit. For 20 points of damage that I'm sure... Or, sorry, 12 points of damage that I'm sure goes through. Yeah. Why and then I'll hit him on the backswing. Why is it rolling two, twice for your damage? Uh, I don't know. I might have double-clicked accidentally. All right, yeah, it's and it's, seeing, it's taken none of your damage. Cool, yeah, he wouldn't realize that until the backswing happened, which was an eight on the die for a thirteen total for nothing. And uh, thanks to being second, I uh, oh no, that's fine. Yeah, seeing how great that went, I think I'm just gonna spend a round retching. Okay, that's fair. And that is a fortitude save, correct? Yep, uh, fortitude save versus the DC against the effect that made you sickened. Perfect. It's a 21. That is a meets beats. You are no longer yeah. sickened, and you got rid of your persistent damage on top of that. Let's fucking Let's go. go. Cool. It's a round well wow. spent. Go, Zaba, go. Very, su very successful round defensively, but <laughs> because you don't take any of that, that mental damage. All right, Vesuviak, yeah, right. you are I up. Clearly not doing any damage to this opponent, so... Okay. 
So you see a ghost undead spirit in front of you. What you gonna do? Okay. So I think Vesuviak is going to uh, use a stride action. Oh, wait, do I need to make a save? Oh, yeah, you, you will need to make a save. You could also, don't, don't forget, you could also, spend, if you don't have an action, you're probably the best at religion. You could probably spend a, a, uh, an action to recall knowledge, because if it's an undead, you'd probably have the best. But it might not be undead, too. It could be compl so something else, too. Let's see how I fare on my fear side of things. Oh, no. That one. Uh-oh. That's a crit fail. Do you want to spend your hero point? Yeah, I think it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> you know the DM's like, hey. Do I just so, uh, oh. click the button so, again? Re so right-click on that 13 in the chat. And then re-roll, and then there'll, there'll be an option saying re-roll using hero point. Gotcha. That's much oh. better. <laughs> that's a thir or 14 on the die for a 26. <laughs> Almost a crit success, but that's just normal success. Dang. Okay. Uh, that's a okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'll use an action to recall knowledge on this guy. Okay. What would that be? Religion check? So, let's see here. What are your lores? Let me see your lore. Warfare. Ooh, <laughs> no, that wouldn't be it. You can make a religion or occultism. Yeah. Yeah, you can attempt a religion. Yeah, religion's my highest. I'll go with that. <laughs> that is going to be... It'll be, it'll be secret. Uh, okay. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. I didn't know. <laughs> that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Okay, You're not sure that's... what this is. It's, 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 it's incorporeal. It's ethereal. But, okay. yeah, you're not sure what this is beyond that. That is a-okay. I think what Vesuviak is going to go ahead and do then is uh, I'm going to stay placed where I am right now. I'm just going to be the Barbarian's Pocket Healer, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and cast uh, Forbidding Ward onto Zaba. So yeah. Let's okay. Protect the boy. That taken care of. Alright. You want to drag that on yourself, Corey? Yeah. Forbidding Ward. I was just reading the wording to see okay. how it was cast. And that'll so, be all three of my actions. It's Forbidding Ward's a two-action thing. Perfect. Okay. What up, nerd? <laughs> well, yeah, the nerd's gonna count. Go. Yeah. And okay, it will. First of all, doesn't it's gonna just laugh at these two who can't hit it for <laughs> shit. As it's gonna make it and float its way over to Timothy because oh, shit. <laughs> he's the one who did actually hurt him. Yeah. Hey, yeah, what's up? And he is going to, well, so for free, now, as he spent one action, he is going to have Vesuviak make this fortitude save for free. Oh, no. Vesuviak? Vesuviak. Up. Oh, yep. Sorry, my bad. I was <laughs> writing a note down. Ooh, there you Six go. Six on the die plus nine, twenty-five. You're good. You're good. You are not n nauseated. Yay! <laughs> Yippee! But this this creature just looks right at Timothy and hey, hey, what's up? actually says it out loud in a voice that everybody can hear, not telepathically. You shall die. No, you. And it's gonna punch you. Ew! Don't punch me. I'm baby. <laughs> and you—you you got punched. Man. <laughs> For ten, four damage. Ouch. Ouch. Oh, my fragile bones. <laughs> and you are. And then after you got punched. Mm -hmm. 
it's going to spend its third action pushing you. Ew, don't push because, it. Uh, because you got punched. Oh man. You are pushed away from it by oh, the force of that punch. No. All right. Now cool. it's your turn. It is my turn. All right. Let me actually click on this cat really quick. Sorry, just so I could select him. Okay, cool. So I'm going to try to recall knowledge on this guy because I want to get more information about him. Yeah. See what like would be good. I do have a thing called unmistakable lore, by the way. I'm going to press this because this might help me out with what I'm about to do because just, just so that way it's like shown. So I'm going to do recall of knowledge, but okay. you're going to roll your esoteric lore. Yeah, I'm going to roll esoteric lore. Okay. And what's your rank in it? Oh my god. Okay. Oh, pretty high. Sorry, I should have hit that. You're expert. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you I can I should have hit okay. that. I'm that's, sorry. You're you're fine. You're fine. That's okay. So, that so yeah, that's that's a um, <laughs> big success. That's a critical success. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, let me tell you the baseline information since you got a success. And okay. then since you got a critical success, I'll let you ask three questions about it. Okay. One of which you already know because you already know that it has no weaknesses. But this thing is called a killing intent. This okay. is a chaotic, evil, ethereal, incorporeal spirit. Okay. Now, the thing about this uh, chaotic, our killing, our killing intent is that they are attracted to fear. And they feed oh. on, on, they feed on pure bloodlust. So okay. these mysterious entities manifest on the ethereal plane when an especially violent mortal perishes on that plane and leaves a significant psychic impression on the planar landscape. A killing intense presence is more often felt than perceived by sight or sound. Witnesses report sudden drops in temperature, constant strong winds, and the ex extinguishments of light. More terrifying, though, are counter reports, which suggest that these phenomena occur solely within the mind of a killing intense victim. Now, what do you want? What questions do you want to know about it? So, okay. Again, you can ask things like immunities, resistances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lowest saves, highest saves, special abilities. Yeah. Stuff like I wanna that. know its lowest save. Its lowest save is gonna be its fortitude save. Okay. I figured, but I wanted to ask that. Yep. And what are its immunities? Because I know slashing from what it sounds like. No actual no. slashing weapons, right? No, 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 no. So it's immunity oh. it's immune to disease. Okay. It's immune to fear. Okay. Immune to poison and Got immune it. to precision. And so it's, it's, it's a spirit. It can't be knocked unconscious. Figured. Okay. So Timothy, as he and gets got, all of this. Oh, sorry. You get one more question. I do get one more question. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I thought I only got two. No, you already you already knew the, that it has no weaknesses. Yes. So you can get one more question. Okay, then. Yeah, the oh, weaknesses. The weakness one came from your some from your exploit vulnerability. Yes, so. you're right. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Do you want to know its resistances? Yeah, I would like to know its resistances. That's what I was about to ask. So it's immune to all damage. Five. Jason from the future here. So I keep saying immune, and I say it a couple times here. I actually mean resistant. Sorry about that. All right, back to the show. The things, the things that can overcome it are force, ghost touch, and mental. Rad. That's awesome. That's okay. A, so that's why your wand went all, all of that went through. Got it. Perfect. So Timothy looks, or at least Timothy, as he's getting this information, he looks to his party members and he says, hey, if you can do any kind of mental or force damage, that thing's going to take it. And so, like, he's basically relaying all the information that he learned with, like, a free action, I guess it would be. 
just to like everybody be like, hey, this is what it's weak to. This is what this is what it helps out. Yeah. And so then with that, I want to cast with my wand the cantrip days. Ooh, nice. Yeah. So okay. So I cloud the target's mind and gaze so it with a mental joy uh, jolt. So what he does is Timothy looks to this thing after it pushes him and just smirks to him, despite like you know him looking a little bit more bloody than normal. Just as a oh, big mistake, bud. And casts days. All and right. it's just filled with images of liquor and beer and things so, like that. <laughs> so just for the listeners, so um, Timothy has innate occult spells and just it's not actually coming out of the wand. It's just, just that's just the flavor. Yeah, that's the flavor. That's the flavor. It's, this is just an innate occult spell that Timothy yeah. has. All right, so this thing will make a basic will save. We'll see. All oh, I right. got so excited for so a second. So that's a success. Oh, it's going to take half of your damage. Yeah, so I'll roll that damage. I should still be targeting it. Oop. <laughs> right. So it'll take two. Hey, that's two mental damage. Oh, no. <laughs> two. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And we And then will... because I had that, personal so that was two antithesis. actions to cast. That's right. Yeah. So I was just remembering the personal antithesis thing. I was just trying to remember if that also adds on. I don't no, think it does, because though. that you no. used a spell, so it's only yes. your weapons or your implements. Yes, okay. That's what I just wanted to remember. Cool beans. I'm no. learning. You're good. You're good. Alright. That's All what right. Timothy and, does. Yeah, we're going turn. long because we're gonna finish this fight before we before we break it up. Yeah. Alright, Syl, so you're up. Yeah, I'm up, and just Timothy didn't say immune to physical damage. I, this no, thing I told you everything. So, so right, so yeah. yeah, but it definitely didn't take damage from us. So oh, it's yeah. immune to all damage. Five, except force, ghost touch, and mental. So it did take some damage from us. Well, it's it's it was completely immune to your precision, so it took none, and then you rolled less than. Five oh, on your, yeah, on, your yeah, yeah, yeah. on your cards on my normal dice. Yes, got it. All caught up. So it did so take it, some from Zaba. Some, but not cool. all. Cool, but not all. But not all. Okay. So in theory, if I can roll high <laughs> enough on D fours. Okay. So I will then move up. Okay. Just standing diagonally adjacent to it. I'm realizing. No, Zabba's got reach. I don't need to leave space for him. Okay, so moving up, and we will just not worry about getting advantage or uh, flat-footed. So strike, slash. Rolled a six on the die, which 17. That's no good. That's no good. Yeah. And a second attempt. An 11 on the die. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, for an 18. It actually... Hits. Looks like. Give me one second here. I was just assuming this was going to be another um, non-contribution turn. That is a hit. So let's see if you can actually do more than five damage. Ooh, that'd be great. <laughs> I did ten damage. Hey, hey, hey. Useful. It took some. Cool. Just chipping away. Perfect. Yep. Hey, it's better than nothing, man. And ending. All right, Zaba Otrav. My friends, you know what I do. Hold on, you got you got to save for the aura. Oh yeah. You're not <laughs> part of the cool kids club yet. <laughs> you and Vesuvia. Not yet. <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh no. Uh, you're, you're, you're frightened. Uh, it's a big old. Shout out to the two crew. I gained that frightened condition. <laughs> Shout out to the two crew. Which makes total sense. And uh, being super happy about that. I'm just going to keep doing exactly what I've been doing. Oh. Zaba knows nothing else. I, I hit things with sword or spear. <laughs> uh, an 18 yeah. on an 8 on the roll. That's a hit. Hell yeah. Uh, that is 20 points of slashing damage. And I'll, uh, And that's dead. Strike. 
Yay! Oh, I, thank I, God. I, <laughs> makes sense that I, I miss, because I swing anyways. All right, and that is where we're going to end the episode with a with Zaba taking the killing intent out. And Zaba, his party didn't end. So we hope that your party <laughs> Not yet. doesn't end. <laughs> See ya. The Jewel of the Indigo Isles Adventure Path is copyright 2023. All logos, titles, and artwork are property of Skyscraper Studios and Roll for Combat and used with permission. Pathfinder is a trademark of Paizo Incorporated. The theme music is written and performed by Robbie Whiplash.